So we have here the rally segmentation plan. And this is uh, really to look at the rally in a very, very different way. Um, what tends to happen is that people um, and coaches and players, because of the way the tennis point is perceived, get, um, I think, focus too much on this side, which is the nine plus and the extended part of the rally. So if the rally goes above nine shots, we call it the extended rally. Um, but it only really accounts for 10% of points where, where the extended rallies occur. However, if you were to ask players, if you were to ask coaches or people who watch tennis, they'd say that, or they give an account of the tennis point where extended rallies are um, perceived to be a lot more common than they actually are. Okay, They still only ever account for 10% uh, from the data the extensive data that, uh, that, that we've done. And what happens is because of um, the perception of tennis, we get kind of stuck in 70% of, of lessons we've noted. And that's not true of every lesson. It's not true of every coach. But we get stuck in the extended rally um, phase uh, when we're training. So we tend to focus on that. Um, and that'll happen when, you know, you're just having a hit or rallying, okay? Where the emphasis is on just getting the ball back and, you know, let's get 20 shots in because we need to be more consistent at a point. Therefore, what we're going to do is extended rally practice. Um, now, that does help us rehearse. Uh, the extended rally part of the point which occurs 10% of the time but unfortunately we're doing it 70% of the time and that we think means that the 90% of the point which is 0 to 8 shots um, so the non-extended part of the point the first strike and the play patterns we call it so 0 to 4 and then four to eight, 5 to 8 this part of the point, that's very rarely looked at and it's neglected. But we can see here that 70% of the points played um, occur or will finish by the fourth shot. 20% will finish by uh, the eighth shot. So what that means is, so from zero to eight, the points, the by the eighth shot, ninety percent of points are finished. This, I think, has forced us at the art of winning to look at the rally in a very, very different way and to segment it into sections. Because if we're focused here and not here, we can often we're often finding that players aren't reaching the extended part of the rally because they're not rehearsing the first strike, the zero to four or the five to eight. And these two segments, I would say, have their own, their own principles and they have their own dynamics. So if you want to maximize your chance of winning a point, and look, I'm very pro extended rallies. I want my players to get that far. But if they're not able to uh, train and um, adapt to the demands of the first strike, first two shots of the um, of the point, um, and the second two, then we're not we're not going to get to the extended rally. So with the first strike, we've got a situation where um, really we're looking at serve and the S1, which is the shot after the serve, or if you're the returning player, the R and the R1. The biggest number of errors that occur are return errors in tennis, and that's across the board. So that goes from ATP Tour all the way down um, to beginner and good club level. 
you'll find that that is the problem. And that's why this is so high because of missed returns. People tend to focus on the serve as the source of error, but that's really not the case. Um, so there are demands in the first strike area where um, we get these first two shots in. That should be the primary focus um, in order to get to the second phase, the pattern phase. And the more you get your players to focus on getting the, these two shots in, error elimination is much more um, dramatic, significant and permanent than if we're focused on consistency here and elimination in this area, because this is where the errors are occurring here. This is where the matches are decided in the first strike phase. And by that, I mean the player who's got a better first strike um, result and by that means by that I mean the player who has got his first two shots in more than the other is going to win the match so we need to be looking in my opinion um, at this area far more so that we can then get our players into this second segment uh, of the rally and we can see here that I've divided it into uh, one, two, one, two, one, two. So the segments are these two shots. So first and second shot of the first strike, first and second of the uh, play patterns, and then nine plus, that's your third, fourth, fifth, six, one, two, one, two, depending on how long the rally goes uh, goes on for. Um it's very important that we kind of identify where the error comes from. Is it on the first, which if they're serving, unlikely that they're continually double faulting, but is, are they making second errors on the second shot of the pair? Okay. That's another question that rally segmentation can, you can start to look at with your player. Um, another factor is that when we get to the, the, the pattern of play area, what about the transition? So between um, the, the second shot here and the first shot in this section, so between shots two uh, and three, um, you'll note that a lot of coaching and a lot of coaching programs emphasize you know the, the, the winner on the, the third shot you should try and establish dominance on the third shot now this rally segmentation actually brings that into question should you do that or you know is there another way depending on the context of the point something we looked at earlier is there another way of moving from um the first strike zone the second shot of the first strike into the first shot of the play patterns a uh, very important point. Um, so we're, we're kind of at the art of winning, lo looking at you know how the player moves from um, first strike to, into the play pattern zone. So I hope that gives you some overview of of what we've got here um, in rally segmentation. I'm, I'm going to go maybe into a little bit more depth um, now with the uh, with the written piece, uh, which you're, which you'll find on LinkedIn. I'm also going to send that send that to you via email and put it into the uh, Facebook community. And I really would uh, appreciate your feedback. And um, if you do have any questions, I'm going to be doing a Facebook Live on uh, rally segmentation. So thank you very much for listening. And I hope to hear from you very soon.